Hello lab mates, mailbag time, Got a bunch of stuff, loads of things here, let's get into it. If you're first time here make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, very important you do that. Wow, these took ages to arrive. Wow, I ordered these a year ago. <laughs> so these are some 2.1mm DC jacks with obviously screw terminals on the end there so you can do some easy connections with screws. So that's what's there. Yeah, this is ages ago I ordered these things. I thought they'd gone missing. I don't even have it on my list anymore. I probably got refunded. Mm. Anyway, good links for these down below. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. Appreciate everyone that supports my channel. Even give me a like is a th support for the channel. So if you want to go and give me a like, that'd be great. These are something which I ordered recently. And it's a 6.6 .6 to 8.4 volt battery level gauge. Let's actually hook this up and actually give it a try and see if it works. It should do. So here goes a close up view. So it's got five levels on it. And you push your test button to bring it up. So I've currently got my power supply here running at 5.1 volts. It's just got two wires, red and black go into it. Push test button and you've got a red LED showing up. Now my lighting is really bright here so it makes it look quite dark on camera. But for me it actually looks fine. So let's increase the voltage a little bit. Let's go up by, let's go to 6 volts. See if that does anything. Okay, still just one LED. Okay, let's go 6.5 volts. Still one LED. Because it did say 6.6 .6, didn't it? So let's go 7 volts. Oh, there we go. We've got a blue LED then. There's the first one. And... You go that actually I can do this whilst it's on. That's pretty cool. So let's do that. Let's find out where the limits are actually. So I bring this back down to say six and a half volts, turn it on. So that's six point eight volts, the second one comes on. That one comes on at seven point two. That one comes on at seven point six. That one comes on at 8 volts. So there you go. Just a nice little fuel gauge for lithium cells or any kind of supply which is in that range. I've got this for my projects, my like my voltage divider stuff. I thought I could stick this on the casing, wire that into the case, and then you don't have to pull the thing apart to test the batteries to see what they're like or see if you need to charge them. You can just push the button and go, oh yeah, no, that's fine, don't need to be charged. Sweet. These were pretty cheap too, they weren't that expensive. Yeah, links for these down below. I've also got a single cell one, I've got two of these as well, I forgot to bet those ones. Exactly the same kind of form factor and everything. Must just be like a different voltage divider or something on there. So these are supposed to be rated from 3.3 volts to 4.2. So let's hook this up as well. Okay, so as you can see it looks exactly the same. Let's push that, got a red light on. Let's increase the voltage. This one doesn't stay on for as long. We go, it's just starting to come up that one. Gosh, because of the low voltage there, it's affecting it a little bit more. There's a 3.6 that's starting to come on. I think, actually. There you go, 3.5 it starts to come on. 3.7, the next one comes on. 3.9, that one, I think. Yeah, 3.9. And that comes on at 4.1. So that's for a single cell. It works fine. Like I said, there'll be links for these things down below. Handy little things for projects. And that's what the back end looks like. It's basically smooth, so you can just put it onto a panel. Just drill a hole through for the wires, stick it on with a bit of double sided tape, you're done. Let's see what's in this box here. Oh, it's a mouse pad. This one is ergonomic ones, pretty plain. Now, I actually don't like these myself, my wife likes them. So you've got this foam gel pack thing here, so you can wrist your wrist on that and use your mouse and try and reduce wrist strain and RSI and stuff like that in your wrist, you know. Put it a strain injury or carpal tunnel and those sorts of things which are all very nasty. Um, doing too much mousing can do that. Seems alright. My wife's current one is a bit um, tatty, so I thought I'd get another one for her. Ah, some more of these switches. I ordered these a while ago. This took a while to arrive. Yeah, these are for the record Dana. It's a little 6x6x11mm by six by switches. These aren't exactly the right ones, they're actually a little bit tall, but they're really close to right. Close enough to be usable. Now, they're not perfect. I mean, you can't actually like clip the switches onto them, like your button caps. You have to glue them on carefully. 
that's not that big a deal. It's pretty simple to do. I've done some videos on this before, showing the rep record Dana repairs and replacing all these switches. 1991, 1992s are the ones I've done. These are the parts you need to find if you need to do that job. Now, there is also a forum thread on the EV blog forum, and that does actually mention the proper part number of a part which is, should be a drop in replacement, but these are cheap. The other ones, not so much. Another thing which took ages to arrive, a bunch of these BMS modules. So there's a whole bunch of them on this board, just break them off as you need them. These are two cell BMS modules, and that's how you put them up on the back there. So battery positive, battery negative, as in the extremes, you go battery middle. Let me explain this better. So negative of battery goes here, the positive of the same battery comes over to here. The negative of the other battery goes there, and the positive of that the other battery goes here. So that becomes a series network, and so it senses the middle of the batteries. And these are the outputs here. Outputs and inputs, so you use these to charge it as well as discharge. So you just connect your power lines up to this and run it through a switch or whatever on the bit of gear you're working on. So a nice little BMS, they work quite well. We use these in nice little projects. I've been very happy with them, and I only had a few left, so I thought we'd get a stack more. But I ordered these a while ago again, and they've only just arrived. Been a bit of an issue with that recently, but oh well. At least things have started turning up finally. Capacitors. Uh, 33 microfarad, 40 volts. So I did these. These are from Adam 14, so it might be a good for these things. Just capacitors, not too exciting, but these are for the Datrons. I did order these from uh, Adam 14 and RS. RS beat Adam 14 by a day. This time. Sometimes yellow round. But uh, anyway, at least now I've got a stack of these now. Um, 33 microfarads. So these are the ones I got from RS. So now I've got a bunch more to go in there, so I've got a good stock now. I don't have to worry about those ones anymore. Tenors. Thank you, really. Download the tutorial. Really? So these are some little antenna with some SMA to whatever the hell those microwave connectors are. I've forgotten what they're called now. Is it MCX, is it? MCX connector? I can't remember. 915 megahertz antennas. So 915 megahertz, 10 centimeter. That's what's in there. So I've got a few of those. So four of those. So I play around with them. Well packaged. Oh, it's a bunch of a bunch of lore modules. One's fallen out. Always most suspicious when you get one that's fallen out. Just not sealed. So these are the E32 modules. E32 915T30D. So this is the one watt module. I've got a couple of those. And I've got the companion parts here as well, which is the 20D, which are the 100 milliwatts versions. So Gateway might use these, and the individual components might use these. So I've used a whole bunch of A68 megahertz stuff for some projects, and I want to do some 915 megahertz stuff as well, because I run out of bandwidth. Basically, I need some more space on the spectrum, so I need to change into these. So if you don't know what those are, these are actually for LoRa systems, like LoRa modules. So these are really easy to use. They're brilliant actually, I really like them. I'll show you the back on them. So they've got MO and M1, which are programming pins, RX, TX, AUX, VCC, and ground. So you just send serial data to it at, uh, was it 9600 board, I think it was. The AUX pin gives you a status of whether it's active or not. And the program pins you see that when you're doing your initial configuration. You can do that in software as well over serial, but you have to obviously switch those pins too. Good little modules, they're really easy to use, I quite like them. I did actually do a sponsor video with PCB Way. When I built a gateway, I've actually got a PCB here. So I made these PCBs, which is a LoRa to Wi-Fi gateway, and that's what it looks like. Okay, so I made these a while ago, I don't know, about a year or so ago. Just over a year ago, actually. It worked fine. I've actually just redesigned a new version of this to simplify it. I've figured out what I do and don't need on these boards, and I've actually stripped them down and made them significantly smaller. I've actually got a new version on the way, which, which I've paid for myself. I haven't sponsored those ones. Those ones I've decided to make myself and pay for. Occasionally, you should pay for things. This is M14 as well. Let's open the top. I might have to use the actual knife for this. I'm going to. Here we go. Show you on halfway through, hopefully. Ah, right. LEDs. These are for my Datron project. Now, I did show some other ones I used before I did the Datron. When I did the displays on that. If you haven't seen my Datron projects on my main channel, those also sponsor videos. Trying to find a PCB. Give me a second. It's my revision one PCBs. So I did these, and this is, replaces the broken Datron displays in like the 1062s and similar. 
um, even works on the calibrators too, actually the same display. This is the revision one, I've made some changes to it since then. I've actually got some more of these coming. I've got revision 1.1 coming, which has got some bug fixes on it. Nothing major, just a couple of little things I have to do. A couple of small mistakes I've made. What I actually used before the LED segments, they had like a grey front on them. You could see them through the front panel. I had to put some extra filtering on to try and hide them, that sort of stuff. I had to do it anyway because of the solder joints and what have you. It was a bit harder to hide them. And they're fairly expensive displays. I think they were something like $4 each. Each one of these digits was $4, something like that. Even in quantity, it's like $3.70 or something. What I found is these other ones, which are pin for pin compatible, black front, and they're about a dollar cheaper, dollar fifty cheaper maybe. So I've got a bunch of these to try out. So the next one I build, I'll be using these ones instead. These are also red displays. So that's what they actually are. So yeah, that's what I intend to use if I can. So in the near future, you'll see me do my next revision of this board, which is slightly improved using these digits and a couple of other things I've did as well. Also using these enunciators, which I did my 3D printer. So it comes out pretty nice. And my intention is to sell some of these boards. I have a, a system which works. I'm going to do like a video showing how to do it or describing how to do it. I've already kind of covered some footage anyway. It requires modifications of the digital display board driver, but it does work. So I've already got one dash on converted, which is based off the prototype. Yeah, these displays are make it a bit cheaper because if I can do the parts cheaper, I can sell them for a little bit less money as well. So the idea is that if you have a Datron with a broken display, you'll be able to get a replacement. Might be at risk you some stuff with a Thanks for watching, give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, all that usual stuff. And I'll check out the stuff on my main channel too. And subscribe to that too if you're not on it. Get you later.